Yo, what it do guys? Welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video and we're just going to jump straight into it today. All right, so let's just go ahead and go. There'll be a lot of information coming your way, but feel free to pause the video, rewind, anything else like that if it helps you understand it. I'll put a couple of notes on the screen and I'll give you a bit of a recap of what's going on. But we're going to be focused on Warlock. We're going to be focusing on Solar, Light, Subclass or a Dawnblade here. And then we're also going to be working on Sun Braces as the exotic. So let's jump straight into Sun Braces, what it does and why we're going to be doing this build. So increases duration of solar grenades now solar grenades are a type of grenades i know it sounds a bit weird there is a grenade called solar grenades it's not to be confused with all of these other ones here so we're not talking about all solar grenades we're talking about the grenade called solar grenades just to make sure that everybody is on board with that so that's a grenade that you will be wanting to take but some races increase the duration of them basically doubles it and solar melee kills grant unlimited solar grenade energy for a brief time basically give you a rough idea you'll get around like five grenades or something back within like five seconds so it's like one grenade within one second so you just throw grenades everywhere <laughs> you're just making it rain with grenades that's how it works right but the main emphasis is is that you need melee kills with it so let's go and talk about the stats here before we go in towards the abilities and everything else stat wise take resilience because you want to go and look after yourself again this is just slightly after lightfall so if this video becomes outdated in the future and other stats are more important uh resilience will work really well here don't get me wrong mobility could be nice for extra jump height within this build um this is something just go ahead and remember a little bit later but uh mobility could be good because you're going to spend a lot of time airborne otherwise the idea is that you want more strength now you might go ahead and realize that i've got quite low strength here i don't mean to have low strength unfortunately i just don't have the right setup for this and i'd have to go and farm some more artifice armor and make sure i have strength covered in the artifice armor um so ideally i would bump that up as much as i can but don't worry you will have mods for you to go ahead and use and help you out with cooldowns and you also got some fragments and stuff to go ahead and help you out as well okay but for now resilience for protection and then probably strength try and bump that up make sure your recovery isn't too low because you still want to go and heal yourself but there's plenty of healing inside this build anyway so don't worry too much about recovery mobility can help you with the jump height and discipline is just okay it doesn't really matter too much here you'll get unlimited grenade energy anyways so so going in towards the abilities um, and aspects and fragments, we're going to start off with the aspects first and then kind of go backwards through the abilities and then the fragments. So as for the aspects, we're going to start off with heat risers. The main reason for this is because you will consume your grenades and when you consume, so you hold the grenade button, if you're on controller or on PC, just consume your grenade button. Once you've consumed it, so just hold the button down, you've consumed it, you will get a burst for healing. So if you do need to be healed, consume the grenades. It will, it will heal you to basically full. From there onwards, whenever you now jump and glide in the air, you'll be able to glide in the air for way longer. Not only that, but you can actually go and do melee, throw grenades, everything. It's way nicer to go and do. But the main reason for this is final blows whilst airborne increase the duration of heat rises. Okay, so you go ahead and consume the grenades, you shoot something, and then it almost doubles the amount of time, which is really good. So you kill something and then it doubles the amount of time and it grants you melee energy. Well, if you remember, some braces basically wants melee energy, so it always wants melee kind of doing something, getting kills. So this is really useful. Um, so a key tip to remember, if you happen to not get a melee kill and you've used your melee ability, just stay in the air, try and get kills in the air, and you'll get uh, melee energy back as well, okay? Now, we got Touch of Flame over here as well, and Touch of Flame is going to be the other aspect. We basically want the solar grenade one that you see in there. As mentioned earlier, this is the solar grenades. Um, it basically um, uh, increases the lingering duration and periodically emits blobs of lava around it. You'll see gameplay on the screen at some point. I'm not too sure where I'll fit it in, but you'll see just all of the blobs of lava going everywhere, and uh, it's really good. It just helps out with the AoE and helps out with, with the extra damage, so why not, right? So from now onwards, we're going to go and have a little look at abilities. So the grenades incinerate a snap. To put this simply, the difference between these two is this is better if you're looking to go ahead and blast something down and do more damage. This doesn't do, in my opinion, as much damage, but this is more kind of like single target. This is more kind of AOE in front of you. Imagine like a line. You can see it in there. A line of little fire bolts that come out like you, like a firework, if you will. This is more direct and very narrow when you shoot it out. Um, so this will be really good because you want to try and spread this off to other enemies. If you can get lots of kills here, you'll be able to go and keep clicking uh, and so forth. Uh, there was also a bug 
before Lightfall, where if you did go ahead and apply this to an enemy or try and kill him with it, it didn't actually refresh the sun braces. I do not know if that bug has been fixed. I just want it to be said in the video, okay? So that you guys understand this for future reference. If it's not, go with whichever one you like, but I think Incinerator works better here. Um, so just kind of snap onto them, throw a grenade. It doesn't matter which order you go and do it in. As long as they go and die, you should end up just kind of keep working with it, all right? Now we got Burst Glides. Burst Glide, well, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but Burst Glide is just really good for the movement and the mobility. And since you're going to be using a lot of kind of airborne, I would prefer Burst Glide, but choose whichever one you guys want to. Now we got Phoenix Dive. Phoenix Dive um, essentially got buffed as well um this uh, this season season 20 uh beginning of lightfall um basically it's just better just overall it's just better the averages work out better it pairs better with heat rises now it's a way to go and get you down to the ground um when you do come down to the ground you get restoration restoration is increased due to heat rises restoration um is also increased well due to the empyrean over here um it's just a lot of healing okay and when you do go ahead and land down try and land into a group of enemies as well if you want to because you scorch nearby enemies whenever you land so it's actually like a kamikaze dive into them if you want to obviously don't leave it too late um if you do need to move away from them then go ahead and heal in a different area but um yeah don't be afraid to kind of dive into them because it kind of works all right uh then your restoration starts procking and you get loads of survival now I don't know if I already mentioned, and if I didn't mention, Solar Grenade did go and get a buff in Lightfall, um, where Solar Grenade now will cure you if you run this fragment. As you can go see here, Solar Grenade Final Blows cure you. So you're getting heals from your grenades, you're getting heals and improved healing from your Phoenix uh, dive, uh, and, and you also can go and get heals as well if you go and consume a grenade. And if you have unlimited grenade energy, you could imagine that's a lot of heals that you could go ahead and get there. So there's a lot of healing with this build. If you juggle this right, you are near enough unkillable. So long as you can juggle it correctly, that's where it's a little bit harder and it does take a bit of practice, all right? But definitely give it a shot. Um, from from here onwards, I do like the Ember of Searin. Defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy, which is great. It also creates a Fire Sprite. Fire Sprites uh, are new in Lightfall. To put it simply, as you can see on the left-hand side there, it basically generates grenade energy. And also, if you do pick up a Fire Sprite and you're using Season 20, the Ascendant Scepter, you can also get armor from this as well, okay? If it's not Season 20, Season 21 from here onwards, um, then that might not be in there. But for now, you can also go get armor from here all right but on top of that it also gives you some recovery which is also nice as for the other things we've got ember of eruption ember of eruption is solar ignitions have an increased area of effect and um, this can be good as well so for example if i throw it into a pack of uh, enemies depending on the light level of the content those enemies might just die with the grenades anyways which is fantastic but if they don't die and they're a little bit harder to go and kill you're building up scorch stacks with your grenades and when your scorch stacks build up um, and it explodes uh, that's called an ignition this basically widens the spread to the explosion of the ignition now this can also be good because if you throw this on a bigger target and throw like lots of grenades at the bigger target to apply more scorch stacks and then have the bigger target ignite for extra damage on the target any enemies that are within the vicinity of him will also uh, take damage because the, the the kaboom go wide. <laughs> I went full Neanderthal there. The kaboom go wider, okay? Foreheads, you understand it. So that's currently what I'm running. I would go ahead and say that you can go ahead and have a little look towards some other things in here if you want to. This is where like um, flexibility comes in. For example, your class ability can regenerate faster with Scorch. That anything to do with melee, anything to do with um class these things are just naturally going to be good within the builds grenades you don't need as much energy return but if there's anything you could do to enhance your grenades that's always nice okay as for the supers i don't know if i did cover this forgive me if i didn't um i i won't lie to you this hasn't been one take <laughs> <laughs> so we're going over it now but as for the supers well of radiance is just naturally really good um it's always going to be good and it can also go and get you down from the air if this is on cooldown um and then we've also got daybreak daybreak is just really good if you spend way more time in the air if you're spending lots of time in the air as well and you just want to go full airborne mode and super wash you're in there create loads of orbs kill loads of things go for daybreak all right uh, it did actually get buffed in lightfall and i did use it in pvp and it was a lot of fun i'm just going to be honest so um that's kind of what we're looking at there 
Now, as for the rest of it, weapon wise, it's entirely up to you. You could go and say things like perfect flow, airborne effectiveness, anything else like that would also be good whilst you're in the air. Could you go and run the exotic called Manticore? You could. I personally don't like it because you're going to spend more time shooting the Manticore to kind of keep yourself levitated and you should just be spending time throwing the grenades so i don't really encourage manticore it does synergize but i don't think it synergizes that well it's a little counterintuitive you've got a lot of ability upkeep with this so if you're going to go and use weapons you want to try and use weapons that could enhance it further for example i could fire a wither horde out and just kind of leave it on the ground whilst i'm throwing grenades left right and center see what i mean and then or something like callus mini tool incandescent on callus mini tool I can go ahead and apply Scorch Tax and uh, and that will help get uh, energy back and so forth. Uh, or I can have Unrelentless and I can kill with the Callus Mini Tool with all of the other healing I've got. I've also got Unrelentless in there. Um, so if you don't know what these perks do, I can hover over it. Feel free to pause the video here. Um, but a lot of rapidly defeating them or just kind of killing people here. Um, you can see how that synergizes into the build. The only issue is um, if you spend lots of time airborne, obviously targets might be a little bit further away from you. Um, if you do end up doing this, then you want to make sure you have some range on your Callus Mini Tool because you are going to end up spending quite a fair bit of time away from enemies. Uh, if not, things like uh, Vault Shots and so forth on, on weapons or good AOE kind of bursts or nukes or anything can also just be good because you spend a little bit of time airborne and you can get lots of melee energy back uh, with a big group wipe like vault shot okay um as for the sword i'm actually running the other half of the eager edge perk in here and uh, it's just nice for me to be able to be like oh i'm here airborne i'm just gonna go ahead and eager edge myself over here and now i'm here airborne as well so it's a little bit of airborne mobility and i personally like it it's up to you what you want to go and run here but uh you can make it rain with other things so just go for it okay that's a quest item in case anyone's just looking at that going what the hell's that it's a quest item don't worry about it uh so let's go ahead and cover the mods and what we can go and have a little look at um put it simply right here i can leave it up on the screen so if this is what the main part of all of you guys are looking for this is what it's going to go like again pause it if not i will just go straight over it and what works with what and why you take what so let's start off with the helmet the helmet now essentially um inside these new mods i've kind of found out that ashes to assets is still good because you are going to go and use a lot of grenades so why not go ahead and get uh, super uh, back and super can synergize very well with it why not um, there wasn't really many other options in here. Um, there is power preservation. Your super final blows create extra orbs. But if you're running a well of uh, radiance, you're not really getting kills with that. Um, if you're running day, uh, the daybreak one with the uh, you fly in the air and use the swords, um, this could actually work pretty well. So you could go and use that mod and get extra power orbs, which is not just good for... Um, uh, not just good for yourself with the kind of honestly it's more fun to be honest but it's good for your teammates as well because you're generating extra orbs of them and um, not many other things go ahead and run in here for what it's worth and we're being a bit selfish so we're not running radiant light and powerful friends right now and from there onwards it's basically just siphons and you can ignore these because these are target acquisitions well not so much target acquisitions but these are more oh no it is target acquisitions these are ads in um, so this is just going to fit in well here and I've ran one solar siphon because I wouldn't mind generating orbs of power um, even if it's just for myself um, because we basically want to pick up orbs of power as much as we can. Currently right now we're in a bit of an orb of power meta. We're used to going to be elemental wells but we're not that anymore. So we move down towards this one. Now this is what I went with. Because I've got orbs of power and I'm generating orbs of power and my teammates are generating orbs of power, I want a way, I want something to kind of scale off of that and to go ahead and refund my build. So I run a melee kickstart. To put this simply, collecting an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. When your melee energy is fully expended, so I've just used my melee, I will go and get a burst of melee energy back towards my next melee, right, ability. It's around 20%, give or take. Now, it can scale if I was to use more and more of these. So if I did one melee kickstart, if I did another melee kickstart, you get the idea. Um, but it gives you diminishing returns, right? So the, the second one that I put in here uh, isn't going to be as strong as the first one. The first one is the, the bigger chunk that you get back from it. So keep one melee kickstart. I think that works well. I'm a little bit... Um, I'm a little bit torn between wanting to run two lots of mom momentum transfers 
Causing damage with grenades reduces your melee cooldown. But keep in mind, causing damage with grenades, you're doing a lot of dot and there's a lot of grenades going out there. This might generally just be a little bit better, but keep in mind, you've still got heat rises. So long as you're doing damage with anything, grenades or weapons, and you're, mo uh, if you're mobile in the air, you're basically getting melee back. So I decided to go one for each, but at least this way I'm still utilizing orbs of power within the builds. There's no reason for you to not utilize it. If you want to put it in melee, that's fine. If you want to put it in energy, for phoenix dive you can you just need to do it on your bond but i'll get to that part in a moment as for the last thing i think firepower still works well in here these are probably the mods that i want to be looking at i think fastball was also fine if you just want to kind of throw your grenades a little bit further and have less arc to them you can also go and run fire uh fastball um, but those are like the main ones to go ahead and look into in my opinion these are the ones that i've been messing around with and the ones that i like okay so we move off this and we go in towards the chest. The chest is mostly defensive, but the one thing that I did go and take here was the charged up because I can go ahead and survive mostly with this. And since there's a lot of survivability in everything else I'm doing, remember all the restoration from the grenades, the Phoenix dive, so forth, yada, yada. Um, the charged up will allow me to go ahead and increase my extra charges by one. So instead of me having three armor charges maximum, I can now have four armor charges maximum, okay? So that increases that as well, which will then scale on the melee kickstart. That's the second thing that scales melee kickstart. You can use multiple of these mods or you can have additionally your armor charges will be consumed, gaining extra stacks as well. With four armor charges, give or take, I think I'm getting around about 30, I think it's healthy to say around about 30%. Get around 30% um, melee energy back which is still nice. I don't mind it. It's just a quicker way to go and get it back. So uh, you want to just be throwing grenades. There's a lot of uptime in this build. So um, then we've got the uh, just the protection on the chest. Down on this one, I went with the stacks on stacks. Um, stacks on stacks, basically every one orb of power I pick up would give me one armor charge. With stacks on stacks, every one orb of power I pick up gives me two um, um, armor charges uh, per uh, orb of power that I pick up. So it's just a nicer way for me to go ahead and reach again four. I wouldn't run stacks and stacks naturally on its own, but the moment I go ahead and run at least one charged up, I don't mind stacks and stacks. I think it works pretty well in there. Ideally, though, <clears throat> unlike the chest, this area is a bit more kind of contested because at the end of the day, whenever I pick up um, orbs of power, I can reduce cooldowns across the boards. So there's invigoration for melee cooldown. There's things like um, installation for class ability for the Phoenix dive. There's quite a few different things you could run in here. So if you say, yo, Clark, I don't want to do that. I'd rather go and take this and just not care about the melee kickstart and stuff like that. That's fine. You don't have to go for the orb of power build here. You can go and run installations. You can go and run invigorations. You choose what you think suits you. Okay, there is a little bit of leeway in here. So long as you keep the uptime of your abilities going out and you're positioning it in the air, trust me, you you will be fine all right you will survive then on the final part is the bonds and then this is the part where i mentioned the utility kickstart where again if you wanted to go ahead and get uh, orbs of power for your phoenix dive instead then you could do it here because again phoenix dive is going to help with a lot of restoration uh, i personally prefer it at the minute with the with the uh, melee but i might change it i'm not overly too sure um i'm just kind of enjoying it more with the melee kickstart right now so again towards here, distribution is also good, reduces all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near targets. Really think about how Phoenix Dive works is, I'm kind of kamikaze, oh I will kamikaze, not all of the time but sometimes um, if I do that next to enemies and I kamikaze next to them I also get refreshment back. And then on top of that whenever I go ahead and use uh, my class ability I also go ahead and get melee cooldowns with these, again more, more copies of these, you could just run three of them but you get diminishing returns and it gets worse and worse the more that you add on but it's entirely up to you, I personally think this synergizes pretty well so I've gone with this. Overall, that's basically about the build. You will spend a lot of your time airborne in this build. It is very unique. I personally have been enjoying it, but in order to go and pay this build, there will be a lot of uptime. It's more simplistic to go ahead and just stay at the bottom and run your typical kind of, um, you know, Starfire protocol builds or whatever that you're running on Warlock until this gets nerfed or changed or anything else like that. But um, the uh, Sun Braces is very fun to go and play around with, especially with the heat rises. 
and uh, everything else that surrounds it. So uh, I'm hoping I've explained this build as well as I possibly could with you. Again, I can always go and put this screen up here in case you missed it earlier. Uh, feel free to print screen it and change what you ever want to. Pause the video, whatever you guys want to go and do. I hope it helps you though. And if it did help you, and if you guys enjoyed this video, it shouldn't be too much going to ask for a cheeky like. Um, I hope you do um, enjoy the video and the information. Uh, leave a comment on any feedback. If there's anybody out there that thinks the build can be improved, I'm not going to be annoyed at that. I just want to improve things. I get nerdy about it. So if there is a way to improve it, share the information. And um, besides from that, share the video if you enjoy it. Share it with a friend, anyone else who's looking to play some solar builds for Warlock. Um, that's basically about it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now. We're going to wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys again in the next one.